from Coast Guard. Welcome, Cullum. Good morning, Madam Chair, Mayor Brown, ladies and gentlemen of the Council. On behalf of Coast Guard, thank you very much for your, for your important ongoing support and for your invitation to return and update you on the performance of Coast Guard Northern Region and how your support is making a difference. It's a pleasure to be back and I'd like to introduce my companion today, John McCauley, a member of the Northern Region Board uh, with particular responsibility for financial strategy. So the role of Coast Guard in Northern Region, just to recap quickly, is clearly that we are the charity saving lives at sea. And we do so by providing 24 hour a day, 365 day a year, rescue services for people in strife on our harbours and around our coastline. We operate communications networks that enable boat owners and operators to keep us informed of their movements so that we can keep them informed of the weather and other important safety information and to enable Coast Guard, the police, Surf Life Saving, Westpac Helicopter and other services to coordinate responses when and if required. And finally, we seek to educate the boating public so that they can enjoy and benefit from our great marine environment and avoid getting themselves into hot water in the first place. Coast Guard Northern Region is a registered charity and a lean organisation powered by approximately 1,000 volunteers and only 21 full-time staff. The Auckland region is served by 14 volunteer units from Waiuku in the west uh, through to Kaurau in the north. At this stage of the year, with Easter sadly behind us, we are experiencing the tail to the busy summer period. In the nine months of this financial year, we've undertaken more than 1,478 calls for assistance including 127 search and rescue events. We've completed more than 300 calls for assistance in January alone. And clearly these events cover the full range of incident types from non-life-threatening through to urgent, uh, potentially uh, tragic responses. In March alone, those of you who keep an eye on the media will have been, been aware of incidents such as the near loss of life of three men on the Manukau Bar on the 26th of March, the fire on board the Fuller's Jet Radar Ferry on the 19th of March, and the search and rescue of an elderly man lost off Whangaparoa on the 12th of March, to name just three. In each case, Coast Guard Northern Region has worked with police, Westpac and others to coordinate a response from the rescue centre at Mechanics Bay and in each case, we've been pleased with the manner in which our response has been conducted. Auckland Region represents the lion's share of Coast Guard Northern Region's business, accounting for 81% of our operational hours, and 84% of calls responded to are conducted by Auckland Region's units. Positively this year, we have been involved in fewer fatalities than last year, with our 12-month rolling total of 11 versus 18 at this same point last year. We believe that Coast Guard contributes directly to the achievement of Auckland Council's most livable city objective. Coast Guard service supports our population's increasing use of the marine environment, whether it's privately owned or chartered vessels, and contributes to the Hauraki Gulf's popularity for Kiwis and tourists, directly contributing to the region's economy and to Plan Objective 337. The best information on the size and the nature of the region's boating activity is a study conducted by Becca in 2012 that estimated the number of yachties, launches and other types of boats at approximately 132,000 in 2011. Becca estimated that approximately one in four Auckland council, uh, households have a boat of some form. This year so far, we've educated more than 1,300 students who have gained new skills and joined the tens of thousands enjoying uh, the Gulf, making the most of the environment, knowing that Coast Guard has their back. Now, last year I referenced the fatalities we'd had on the Manukau and Port Waikato bars over the Easter weekend. 
uh, with three members of the public losing their lives. We believe these fatalities are the tragic end result of the increased popularity of fishing offshore where the prizes can be greater. And it's only through good luck that there have been no fatalities this Easter. Uh, some of you may recall the Herald reporting two incidents on Easter Monday this year, one on the Manukau that I've referenced already, and one at Tairua in the Coromandel, both where poor preparation uh, resulted in near tragedy. This is an issue for New Zealand and for Coast Guard and for Auckland, and one that Coast Guard Northern Region has responded to very comprehensively over the last 12 months. This year to date, we've run eight courses in at-risk communities with over 325 people attending. We are teaching the non-negotiables of bar crossing, such as poor, uh, proper preparation, wearing life jackets, carrying two forms of communication, lodging a bar crossing report with Coast Guard. In addition to our courses, we have worked with all forms of media to raise awareness of our messages. In this region, this year, we have avoided any further tragedy, but it's evident from the events on the 26th of March that there is more work to be done. In terms of financial performance of Coast Guard Northern Region, Coast Guard Northern Region has operating costs of approximately $4.5 million per annum, covered by income in the region of $4.8 million. Our income is received from a diverse range of sources, including approximately 10.5% from central government and 14% from this council. Approximately 48% of our income comes from membership subscriptions and education services, with the remainder from grants, just donations, sponsorships and search and rescue recovery costs. We also rely heavily on the generosity of organisations such as Foundation North, the Lion Foundation and NZCT for the provision of grants to fund necessary vessel and infrastructure projects. We've previously reported to the ARAFA board that we've experienced an increase in the number of applications declined or reduced in the last 24 months as a result of factors such as changes to gaming trust levies that, that are taking effect. Many of you will also be aware that the Lotteries Grant Board, whose support we rely upon for the maintenance and replacement of vessels, has signalled re signaled reduced distributions in the year ahead. Coast Guard has a long history of pulling itself up by its bootstraps and we continue to do so. The Northern Region has a very clear financial strategy which aims to reduce our risk associated with our expenses by diversifying our funding sources, by securing longer term funding and through self-help, such as through the growth of our membership base. Auckland Council's funding is very carefully accounted for to meet the operational costs involved in the management of our Marine Rescue Centre at Mechanics Bay, to support Auckland units and to provide for the education outputs previously described. With less certainty of funding from historical sources, a RAFE of funding provides an essential pillar that supports the service we provide. Finally, I'd like to quickly provide an overview of our successes and challenges this year. In addition to operating our core business, we have undertaken a second successful year of our Old for New campaign, uh, going out to 19 communities, exchanging 1,500 end-of-life life jackets and sharing our boating safety message. We've commenced the replacement of Coast Guard North Shore's rescue vessel, which is one of the busiest on the Hauraki Gulf. We've upgraded VHF communications to the outer Hauraki Gulf and increased the capacity and security of our Manukau channels. We've implemented the Health and Safety at Work 2015 Act and are now commencing the introduction of the new maritime operating safety system across our fleet. Last year, I referenced the need to undertake a midlife refit of the rescue centre that we share with SURF, and that programme has now commenced, and subject to funding will complete mid-2017. And finally, we have undertaken a significant project to extend the Coast Guard membership scheme that the Northern Region created and, created and enjoys uh, for the wider benefit of Coast Guard um, across the country. In doing so, we've re repositioned Coast Guard membership away from our last gasp safety net to positioned as the boaties best mate, uh, the number one piece of safe boating equipment 
and that's aimed at promoting the value of membership before you need us rather than after. In conclusion, I would like to say thank you to the, to the Council for the support you provide us. The popularity of the region's coastline shows no sign of let up and Coast Guard Northern Region continues to deliver uh, well above what is asked of it. We greatly value the support that Council provides us each year and we are committed to seeking new ways to ensure that, we ask of, that what we ask of Council <coughs> is sustainable both for the ratepayer and for us as an organisation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cullum, and, and, um, and thank, I thank you uh, as well as I thank Matt for the um, passion the, of what you're doing, and we do absolutely just, appreciate just, she what you're doing as well. Uh, questions, comments, Cullum? Um, yeah, thanks, Madam Chair, and thanks, gentlemen, for your um, very uh, clear message uh, this morning. Uh, quick one for you. How's our new um, bylaw for um, life jackets? within a vessel under six metres working. How's, how's the last summer season gone with that one? Council run courses on tips on Bear in mind, you've got some challenges with the Northland and Waikato with their uh, different bylaws. Thank you. I'd say that we are having um, uh, mixed success with that, uh, Mr Penrose. Um, uh, uh, it's, we do believe that uh, people's understanding of the requirement to wear a life jacket, both for their own personal safety yeah, and in compliance with the bylaw, is improved. Um, but we still only have um, mixed um, uh, uptake of it. So would you think that uh, if we had a, a New Zealand-wide national standard, things would be a lot different as well? I think that makes good sense. Count Sorry, Councillor Hulse. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's a slightly left field question, um, but given the spike in um, divers getting into trouble and quite a lot of near deaths, it's one of those areas that falls between a whole lot of stools. It's not surf life saving, it's not quite Coast Guard, and it's not quite water safe Auckland. And I'm just wondering, without loading anything more on these very, very busy shoulders, somewhere I think regionally we need to be able to have that discussion that they're having in, in some other centres about dive safety. So I will declare a conflict of interest. I'm a very keen diver and obviously pay very close attention to this issue. But given um, Councillor um, Cashmore's question, to the surf life saving, we are growing at a huge pace and the dive community is growing as well. So I'm just wondering where, don't need an answer straight away, but somewhere there's that kind of crossover with some regional discussion because when divers get into trouble, it's often Coast Guard who are the first on the scene because we dive a long way offshore. Yep. So I just am asking, A, how can we support you? B, are we the right body to help bring a discussion together with Water Safe um, Auckland? And C, not looking at my own safety here, but I hope someone's having a look at how we have that discussion regionally. Well, <clears throat> thank you. Um, I can confirm that we have, for instance, responded to a number of dive-related uh, events uh, this year. Um, front of mind is the, is the tragedy at the Barrier Island. Um, uh, it's not been an area that uh, Coast Guard has uh, traditionally taken um, the most proactive role on, uh, but it's something I'll pick up from here and, and start conversations with Water Safe on and, and perhaps some others. Thank you. Councillor Philippine. Thank you, Chair. I, I, I just got one question in regards to the earlier conversation with uh, Councillor Penrose, and that's around the mixed, um, around the life jackets. If we talk about a uh, consistent uh, bylaw or message, do you think having them compulsory uh, or wearing them compulsory would be the answer? I just wanted to get your thoughts around that. I think there are very significant risks in, uh, in failing to wear life jackets, on, particularly on small vessels, and that uh, the, the adoption of the six-metre um, yep. uh, position is a sensible one, um, and as I said, there's more work to be done there. Okay. Okay. Cool. No, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Lee. 
Um, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you for the presentation. Um, Madam Chair, I'm sure everyone, every member in the room would like to express their admiration and thanks to Coast Guard and indeed Surf Life Saving. Um, 